That was Matinal playing Carol of the Bells. We're grateful for music given and shared. And we're grateful to be together to worship God. We begin with the call to worship. A star shining brightly in the east. Discovered by those who have eyes to see the unusual and the challenging. A journey into unknown territory. Taken by those who have courage and curiosity. An encounter with an evil commanding presence. Evil that was faced yet resisted with care. The Holy One recognized despite humble origin. The glory of the gifts given to God's chosen child. Come, let us worship. God of life, Starlight is our night companion, a gift of wonder that helped direct ancient ones on their journey and helps us reflect upon our own. Amen. Our next piece of music is What Child Is This? played on violin by Shanoa Murphy a violinist with the Illinois Symphony Orchestra. Thank you. 
King Herod was frightened and threatened by the birth of the Christ child. All of Jerusalem was frightened with him. We all act out of fear, sometimes in our lives. We can be afraid of losing power, identity, privilege, and things we value. Fear drives us away from God. Help us, O oh God, to suppress our fears and to act out of love and light. God has brought us again to this place where we can leave behind our confessions. For these gifts of confession, God says, thanks. Thanks for your honesty, your trust, your faith, your love. And the gift of God uh, and the gift that God gives us this new year is a new journey with the child who grows, loves us, and lives for us. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God of this moment and every moment, as the seasons change one year to the next from warmer days to colder ones. Help us feel your presence in this moment. Help us listen for your voice. Help us feel your leading. Help us know your compassion and help us live your vision for all God's people. Amen. Our first lesson today is from the prophet Isaiah, the 60th chapter. And it speaks of the human condition, the realities of the struggles in which we live and the hopes which we hold. Uh, and the photograph is from a friend of mine who pastors a church in Scotland. Arise, shine, for your light has come and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will arise upon you, and God's glory will appear over you. Nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look around. They all gather together. They come to you. Your sons shall come from far away, and your daughters shall be carried on their nurses' arms. Then you shall see and be radiant. Your heart shall thrill and rejoice because the abundance of the sea shall be brought to you. The wealth of the nation shall come to you. A multitude of camels shall cover you, the young camels of Midian and Ephah. All those from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and frankincense, and shall proclaim the praise of the Lord. Amen. And our gospel reading from the Gospel of Matthew. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, Magi came from the east to Jerusalem, asking, where is the child who has been born king of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it is written by the prophet, and you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men 
and learn from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem saying, go and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, bring me word so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out. And there ahead of them went the star they had seen at its rising until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they stopped. They were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I was taken with this phrase this week about the joy of the Magi and thinking about what joy looks like for one who is wise. And this is the image that came to me. Maybe you've seen this image of Archbishop Desmond Tutu, who died this last week, at the age of 90, leading worship and dancing. Or maybe you've saw images of him with the Dalai Lama, whispering, exchanging jokes, laughing together, and dancing. joy. In fact, the Archbishop and the Dalai Lama wrote a book about joy. And one of the things that strikes me about joy and thinking about Desmond Tutu and the Dalai Lama is that both men have known extreme hardships. The Dalai Lama has lived in exile from his home most all of his life. And the Archbishop grew up in a poor black family in apartheid South Africa. They knew the struggles, the pain, the losses of humanity. They have known the challenges like the prophet Isaiah does. The prophet describes them as darkness and sometimes they can feel that way. Although as we've talked throughout Advent, there is beauty in the darkness. There's potential in the darkness. There's rest and generation in the darkness. And that there's balance between light and dark. But the kind of darkness that the prophet speaks of is that of pain and fear Fear like King Herod felt, fear that he would be unseated, fear of political uprising, fear of overthrow, maybe fear of Caesar. And the people throughout Jerusalem were afraid too, not necessarily of the Messiah being born. They may well have been afraid of Herod, of his violence, of the occupation of a military that within 70 years would burn the city to the ground. They had real reason for their fears. I don't know how much you know about Desmond Tutu. I presume that after this last week, you probably know more than you did before, that you had a chance to see some of his words or images, to hear people eulogizing this person who's been a leader in the church, Archbishop in the Anglican Church of South Africa. 
It was my honor and joy years ago to hear him speak at a preaching conference in Atlanta. One of the things that struck me was how small a person he was. He's about my size. <laughs> He's little. He's wee. And the other is his joy. He radiates joy. The stories that he would tell were filled with humor. And not humor at anyone else's expense but humor that invites us into deeper acknowledgement of one another's humanity. I remember two stories from his sermon in Atlanta. They inspired me in different ways. One was a story about how when God was creating humanity, uh, God took earth and fashioned the, the first community of people and put them on a baking pan and put them in the oven and then got distracted with the rest of creation and um, uh, they got a little overdone. So they were, they were kind of dark, you know, like when you leave the cookies in too long. And so God made a, another batch of, of people and put them on the, the baking sheet and put them in the oven and this time was, was anxious about not overcooking them and took them out too soon. So they were half baked and kind of pale, you know, like us. <laughs> some of us are, are a little darker, some of us are a little lighter, some of us might be overdone, some of us may be half baked. But the joy of him telling this story about how God makes us all flawed, different, and beloved. As I was listening to the story, it inspired me to think about the pottery that comes out of the kilns at our house and how the same kind of clay bodies can, can look dark in one uh, place in the kiln and light in another. That the clays are made out of similar things, but because they have slightly different experiences, they look different and they're all beautiful. And I got inspired and so I left the church and I um, ran down the street to a gallery where Simon's uh, clay was was for sale and I got two plates one dark one light and I had them gift wrap them and I took them back and was told that I wasn't allowed to leave packages at the Archbishop's Hotel because um, they were concerned that it might not be safe the packages arriving from unknown sources could be a source of danger because the Archbishop had been threatened. So I knew that he was going to be at a service later in the day. And so I went early and I sat in the front row ready to give him my gift. Um, and I never saw him. And I found out later that he came in and sat in the back row. Not the front. I should have known. So I didn't get to give him the plates, but I got a story to share with you. The other story I remember him telling was about how after Nelson Mandela was released from prison after 27 years and elected as the first black president of South Africa, the president selected Desmond Tutu to head, to chair the Truth and Reconciliation Commission. This meant it was his job to listen to story after story of pain, of the horrors of apartheid, committed by factions across the country, not just one side, but all sides, to listen to their pain to listen to their hurt, to listen to the fears that they experienced. And what I remember him saying was that in listening to those stories early on, he would weep with those testifying. He would weep hearing the horrors that they lived or the ones they committed. And then he realized that his own tears might well distract from the truth that people were trying to tell. 
And so it became a spiritual practice for him to save his tears for private space and to stay focused on those stories the people had the courage to tell. Because it is so easy when we are in pain, when we have been hurt, when we are afraid, it is so easy to justify our own hostility, our own hatred, our own uh, sense of vengeance. When we're afraid, when we're hurt, it's easy to think that it's justified to dish back what we've received. As South Africa was moving out of apartheid, <clears throat> there were white folks that were very afraid of being on the receiving end of the kind of behavior they had dished out. There were black folks whose violence they were afraid might return to them. In our own lives, when someone has hurt us or disappointed us, it can be easy to think that they deserve the same. And yet, Isaiah and Archbishop Desmond Tutu and the Magi choose different paths. They choose paths of peace. They choose paths of justice and righteousness and love and light. Desmond Tutu late in his career became known as an advocate for gay rights and advocated for the coexistence of Israel and Palestine. He sought the peaceful way when people could find justification for anything but. The Magi went looking for this child. And isn't it fascinating that they show up with the gifts that are mentioned in Isaiah? And they come from a different place and they return to their home. And we are related to one another despite the differences in country and culture and religious tradition. And they were wise enough to know that Herod did not mean what he said. That his word was not to be trusted. That there was a better way, another way home. May we be wise. May we be loving. May we be just. May we be kind. May we not return evil for evil, but do what is good for God's sake, for the Christ child's sake, knowing that everywhere we go, the Spirit of God leads us, like the Magi, like the prophets, like the Christ child. Amen.
On this Epiphany Sunday, we gather together as one expression of God's community, one expression of Christ's body, one community of faith around God's table to celebrate the sacrament of communion. Anyone who hungers and thirsts for God is welcome to share in this feast. This is the day that we offer what are called star words. We've done this for the last several years, and so this is a gift for you. The Magi bring gifts for Jesus, but God is a gift for us. So if you were to use wordoftheyear.me, uh, you could get your own word for the year. And um, maybe Michelle, you could put that in the chat. Word of the year dot me, and you can have your own word. It can guide you throughout the year. It can be a source of prayer or inspiration or reflection or consideration of new ways to find your way home to God. Whenever we gather for worship, we offer our gifts, we offer ourselves to God who offers us everything. So we share our joys and give our gifts. We do that through direct bank deposits or through our website or by texting. You can do that for um, your regular offering or for your contributions to the capital campaign or special offerings to the denomination. We trust that no matter what the gift is, God blesses it and multiplies it so that all might have enough. And because of these gifts, we are able to sing glory to God. Thank you. May God be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to God. Let us give thanks to God. It is good to give God thanks and praise. Take off your heavy coat of sorrow and grief. We come, come to, to nourish, nourish ourselves in, in glory. Look toward the east and to the west to see the wideness of mercy. We come to feast on grace. O holy one, waiting one, wandering one, who is as close to us as breath and distant as the star, come and join this feast. Prepare this table before us with the abundance that rained manna down from heaven and fed thousands from just five loaves and two fish. Feed our hopes and our fears of all the years as only your steadfast love can. Hear the rumbling in our stomachs for justice and peace in a world full of uneven ground. As much as you hear the praise in our song for the prophets standing on the fringes and demanding change. Come to this table, we come to this table craving change that will nourish our most inward being and cause us to alter the landscape of our lives so much that there is more righteous peace and godly glory. Come, O oh Holy One, into this cup of gladness and this loaf of possibility so that we can prepare our hearts and minds for all that needs to change in this world 
and in ourselves. Come, waiting one, wandering one, feed us with your glory and grace. Jesus gathered with disciples in that upper room in Jerusalem to celebrate God's liberation from slavery and all the fear and pain that binds us in this world. And he took bread and he gave thanks for it and blessed it and broke it, saying, this is my body broken for you. Take, eat, do this in remembrance of me. And after the supper, he took and filled one last cup, saying, this is the cup of the renewed covenant, my blood shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Take and drink all of it. Do this in remembrance of me. In the season of gifts, in this sacrament of gift giving. God's spirit is given to us again to nourish us body and soul so that we might have the courage and wisdom to follow where God leads and tend to the well-being of those we meet on the way, to share the gifts that we have gold, frankincense, myrrh, bread, cup, God's love. May we be blessed and be a blessing. And hear us, God, as we pray the way Jesus teaches us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our last song is the first Noel and you are invited to sing along.
for any uh, any members or guests attending today, thank you for being here this Sunday. You are welcome to stay after the postlude to visit and get better acquainted. Uh, and we have another video for the postlude, so I invite you to stay through that. But as you go from this place, may God be a guiding star before you, a glorious song above you, a gentle path below you, a galvanizing force behind you, wherever you may journey. Amen. Amen.